All right, as a clip from Into the Storm, which actually opens late Thursday. And you can always tell when it's an event movie when they are selling tickets to the public on a Thursday night. And of course, everywhere across the country on Friday, August 8th. Matt Walsh is the star of Into the Storm. Well, the star of the Into the Storm one is of, also the storm. One of many stars. One of many stars. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've noticed this, Matt. You're a Chicago area guy, but, uh, you know, I went to see Into the Storm, and for the first five or ten minutes, I thought it might be a documentary about the weather we have here. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty gripping for people who grew up in Chicago. It's obviously true to life. I saw tornadoes when I was a kid in the burbs and never been in the path of one, but we did the tornado drills. We went in the basement every summer, seemingly. Uh, so they're pretty scary things, absolutely. Well, here's the setup for Into the Storm. Now, the town, where is the town? I know you filmed a lot of it in Michigan. Yes, right? we filmed it all in Pontiac, Michigan, in an old, uh, the indoor stuff was in an old GMC plant that they've okay. converted into a movie studio, mm -hmm. where they shot the, the last Wizard of Oz. And then uh, everything else was in the environs of northern Michigan. So uh, it's the fictional town is Silverton, Oklahoma. It's in Oklahoma. Yeah. You, you know, it's kind of an idyllic Midwestern town. And of course, I love how these movies start because whether it's, you know, whether it's a, it, whether the, the villain is a, a storm or a Godzilla, you, you get this idyllic, you know, these beautiful sun dappled mornings and you get to know everybody. So there's the vice principal who's raising his two sons. Yes. And there's, a, you know, various other characters. And then there's your character who's a storm chaser. Yes, sir. And Pete, I believe his name is. Very right? good. He's, 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 he, and you know he's a wily storm chaser. And here's how I knew this, oh. Matt. Because your baseball cap was very, very weathered. You had a weathered yes. baseball cap. Yes, he's been on the road a long time and he's probably had the same hat for 20 years. So tell us about this guy. He's been he's been doing this for a long time, and he's in Oklahoma, and it's not been a great year. No, Pete's kind of at his wit's end. He's uh, been he's been doing it for 20 years, and he finally has this kick-ass vehicle called the Titus, which can actually anchor into the earth. Yeah. Bulletproof glass, metal, and he his dream is to have a storm pass over him so he can shoot through this turret, uh, the eye of the storm, which no one's ever captured. And he has struck out for three months. He's losing his funding. He's got a rookie cameraman who's losing his, not doing his job. So he's kind of at his wit's end and he's desperate to get the shot and he's sort of taking more chances than he should. Did you get to go into one of those? Because I see these on the Weather Channel. I always watch these storm chaser you know, documentaries. Oh you yeah, I got to vehicle? drive the real deal. I got to beat Shoot. up on it. It was really fun. Yeah. Really fun. Not as reliable as a real one should because we had to, several days we had to tow out one and bring in another and it leaked and so we had a lot of problems. And the funny, the joke the cat, the crew made is they put a shark on the back, like Bruce the Shark and Jaws, because it never worked. So there is <laughs> right, a shot in the true, movie. Yeah. There is a shot in the movie where you can see a shark on the back of it. That's nice. Yeah. Well, you're basically Robert Shaw's character in Jaws in a lot of ways, yes. too. The guy that's, you know, that's been doing it forever and really will risk his life and others for that ultimate moment. You're the first person. I agree with that analogy. That's actually very true. But those the storm would be the shark. Yeah, well, that and that's you know that's that's one of the things I really liked about the movie. So as we were saying, it's like it starts off and it looks like it's just going to be a storm, and then it's these you know the, I, they're using all these technical terms. It's a multiple vortex tornado or yes. something like that, right? Yes. But they really do. They almost reminded me of the the invasion, the invaders in War of the Worlds as they're coming because like there's first there's one, then there's another one. Yeah. And then and there's, there's another. There's a fire nato. There's a fire nato. Fire nato. <laughs> And I don't want to give I don't want to give any, too much away here, but that fire NATO, and that's one of the things I like about this movie as well. It it knows what it is. Yes. So you know when you know let's let's just say that if you're going to meet your end, it might as well be in spectacular fashion. And I'm not talking about your character. I'm talking about somebody. No, else. we don't know how Pete does in the movie. No, there could be a whole there could be a Pete spinoff for God's sake. Sequel you know, out of the storm, <laughs> stormy weather, away from the storm. <laughs> Pete goes to see the perfect storm on video. You never know. You into the volcano. Into Those the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> but but can you talk a little bit, Matt? You said you, you, you filmed in, in, in Pontiac, Michigan, and this is obviously the kind of movie where there's going to be a lot of special effects. You guys can't really hire tornadoes. They've got, no. their, their union's too strong. Yeah, and they're, up for, they're divas. They don't cooperate. So, yeah, you can't hire tornadoes. But that's also, you know, that's always, uh, you know, a, a special challenge for an actor when you're in in Titus or you're, you know, running uh, on a stage and they're saying to, okay, there's one tornado there yeah. and a tree just missed you. And that's got to be an interesting challenge for an actor. Well, I, there was a learning curve. I remember the first day when we were uh, uh, just spotting for tornadoes and they're going to create those later, obviously, in post. So my tendency was always to point. So all the actors are looking and the, and the directors said, don't point, don't point, stop pointing, you're pointing again. So I had to learn, like, just trust that everybody's looking at the same place. 
And then later on, there were funny moments where I tried not to laugh, where you're like surrounded by four green walls and you're in the vehicle and there's wind and rain and there's these poor crew members who are like in raincoats holding, uh, it was one of those mul multiple vortices scenes, uh, holding broomsticks with a tennis ball on it and kind of running around the vehicle <laughs> like merry-go-round ponies. And I'm supposed to be scared and intimidated and it's the real visual I'm seeing was uh, quite different. So there was a learning curve to it. And eventually I think towards the end, uh, we spent like two weeks in a storm drain basically. Mm. And uh, I think I got better at the fictional things that I had to see. The movie's called Into the Storm uh, in theaters late Thursday night and then all day Friday. And from that point forward, we're gonna take a quick break and then pick it up again with Matt Walsh. <laughs> it's a clip from uh, Veep, which also stars Matt Walsh, who's here right now. Of course, we're talking about Into the Storm, which opens uh, Thursday night slash on Friday. Check it out. The Storm is Monster. And, of course, Veep has just got to be such fun for you as a, as a, as a guy, an upright Citizens Brigade guy and a, and a comic actor, Matt, to, to work on a show like that. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, I would imagine. It yeah. is. It is a dream. It's really uh, nice people, and the process is amazing because we... Uh, we get the scripts uh, and they're funny and then we get to workshop them like kind of improvise around them and then the writers go away and change them a little bit and so you're familiar with everything by the time you get to shoot and on the day you can improvise you know five percent of it or whatever but it's it's a blast it's lovely well one of the cool things about it too is i mean you know i mean julia and talk about a rarity someone who has you know two iconic roles you know from seinfeld to this and she's had some other good shows as well but there's room for every character on the show, even though it's it's less than a half hour because it's HBO and no commercials. But each one of you get you get your moments. We know about you. We know about your character's personal life, and, and that's a real that's a real tribute to the writing as well. I think. I agree. They track a ton of characters. I tell, there's a lot of mouths to feed. I always say, and it's true. It's and you get, and as the show's gone on, I feel it's gotten like the first season. I felt like we were just chasing Selena through the hallways, basically. Yeah. And it, I, every year feels more expansive and. You go into somebody's life and then check in on this character and then somehow come together. I agree, it is, it, there's a lot of characters that get to shine on the show. Is that the kind of thing when you're working on it, you, 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 you can tell after a few episodes that you've got something special? I think the something special is perception, ultimately. I always felt confident that this is a really funny show, but for it to catch on is what I think helps make it special, is that you have so many people who are into it and kind of understand it or care about it so you never know if that's going to happen so we're really fortunate as well I think one of the things that makes it work too is it's uh, even though it's about the vice president and or president of the United States and we see a lot of that high level stuff it's essentially you know it's a workplace comedy and the best ones in most cases there are some great I mean, modern families are more of a domestic thing but if you think of you know Parks and Rec or obviously the office because so many things happen and Barney when, Miller Barney Miller so that's a great example because you yeah. know it, it, when it's when it's more of a something said in somebody's house, how many times can the next door neighbor ring the doorbell? You know, there's yeah. always that. But when you have a workplace comedy, it's just much more organic, I think. Yeah, and we thank God we're traveling. Like she's on the road all the time yeah. now because now she's campaigning or she's brokering deals in England, and uh, it's. I think that helps too because one of the things that gets confining about a set, like say a nine seasons of Married with Children, is you mm -hmm. see them in that living room right. every day, and it's a challenge to keep it mm -hmm. fresh. I can't imagine how you would. Uh, as an actor, just keep that fresh because it's a reset every day or reset every week. Like Into the Storm where, it, I mean, there are some, as we mentioned, some comedic moments, but I mean, the character you're playing, for the most part, he's he's the most serious character pretty, pretty much in the story, and that's got to be fun for you as well to play a different type of character like that, I would think. It was fun. Like, the, the drama was fun because there are some, like, nice emotional scenes, and he has a nice journey as a character. He starts out as a jerk, and I think he learns a little bit, which is always good. But really the stunts were what's amazing for me, just driving that awesome vehicle and running by explosions. And it's kind of what you did as a boy in the yard. You just pretend you're a hero. It was really fun and uh, yeah, and just they're giving you like thousands of dollars worth of toys to just have fun oh, with. Yeah, that would be so, so fun. Yeah. I mean, what about though, you know, cause so it's about tornadoes taking over this town and it's very serious nature, obviously lots, but there are lighter moments that, that kind of are catering to your comedic background. Do you have a laugh every now and then? I haven't seen the movie, so. Well, me the personally, when you I don't get to be funny in the ever. movie. I don't think no. But there were moments when I, 
when we started filming were, because I do improv a lot, so I, I kind of threw out a few things <laughs> in the beginning, and there was like no reaction, and it was kind of like being in a cocktail party where nobody <laughs> gets your sense of humor, and I just like, oh, okay, they're All not. Right, that's not the movie. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you don't, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. So, I mean, there's laughs around the set. Well, you've got the two guys it. who are kind of trying to become YouTube stars who are, you know, nicely Straight up placed comedy. in there as the comic relief. Got yes, okay. there's two hillbilly types who... Uh, think they're as good as us at storm chasing, and they have a really good comic uh, relief element in the movie. And you also got to work with Sarah, with uh, Sarah Wayne Kelly, who of course was Walking in Dead. Walking Dead. So I mean, she hasn't had a day where she hasn't had wardrobe that's just beat the hell in about <laughs> five years now. You know? she, she went from zombies to tornadoes, so right? I think she was in Tarzan too. Oh, gee. Yeah. oh So God. she's had, yeah. She was great. Yeah, I never worked with her, and I have never worked with Richard Armitage from The Hobbit and such. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So like real uh, uh, heavyweight, you know, yeah. dramatic yeah. actors was was a good uh, change for me. It was very good. I gotta ask you very quickly too before we let you go, Matt. The the character of the high school principal, who's not a, not a huge character, but he's got a, a couple of scenes in here. Is it just pure coincidence that he looks like a certain uh, chief executive of the United States of America? Did you notice that at all? Uh, I didn't notice the coincidence, no. I have to say I didn't notice the coincidence. That's I probably, really didn't. It probably, well, it, I'm sure it just is a coincidence. Well, I think he's a man who worked on Avatar, that actor. And I wish I yeah, knew his uh, name. Scott Lawrence, I believe. Scott Lawrence, man. lovely yeah. man. And Good Steve yeah. uh, was the post super on Avatar. The director. And, uh, yeah, the director. Steve Quayle was a post super on. So I think he knew a lot of the Avatar guys and a lot of the uh, Titanic actors. So I think he was friends from that company. From that pool. Yeah. All right. The movie is called Into the Storm. Matt Walsh, so much uh, pleasure uh, talking to you. We really appreciate you coming in. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Appreciate it.